Hi, I'm Trish Anderson. I'm a fiber artist and I'm obsessed with tufting. In this tutorial, we're gonna go over how you can tuft words and letters and create gradients such as this. We're gonna start by setting up our tufting frame. I'm gonna move my frame to the edge of the table and attach it with clamps so it's good and secure. Now I'm gonna stretch the backing material onto my frame. This is a really important part and you want your material to be as tight as you possibly can make it. So now that I have the top stretched, I'm gonna move down and I'm gonna pull as I stretch and I'm gonna get the center part lined up. Now that we're finished stretching our frame, we're gonna move on to tufting our project. I'm gonna write the word hay and show you how to do words and then how to also tuft a gradient using yarn. So first off, I'm gonna draw the word hay out and then I'm gonna walk you through how you should set it up on your frame. Things to consider when you're tufting is that you work on the back side of your frame and your artwork comes out on the front side of the frame. So if we're doing a word, it's really important that we draw it backwards on the surface that we're gonna be tufting or otherwise your project will come out backwards and nobody wants that with a word. The ruler just helps me keep my lines straight. Another option, of course, you can just print out your words scaled up. Now that I've had the front set, my design all drawn out, I'm gonna flip it over to the back and then I'm gonna trace the lines again on the back side so that I can make sure they're very clear for when they get taped onto our backing material and so that I can see them really good through the back. Now that we're done tracing the lines on the back of our piece of paper, we're ready to apply it to our backing material. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this piece of paper and I'm gonna tape it to the face of my frame. When I do so, I wanna make sure when I'm on the front of my piece that it actually reads hay in the right way. And then you'll see when we go to the back side of our piece, it's gonna say hay backwards. And that's how you know. You just always make sure what is happening on the front is what you want it to look like. And that way, when you get to the back, it doesn't confuse you. So now we're on the back of our frame. As you can see, hay is backwards. I know it can kind of make you feel crazy, but we're good to go. We've double checked the front. I'm gonna use my ruler again because I'm just always shaky. Um, and then I'm going to trace the lines that are on the piece of paper so that ultimately the design is on our backing fabric. So we have our design transferred to the back. Now I'm gonna go to the front of my frame and take the piece of paper off. So now our design is on the fabric. We're going to make these letters so that they start with dark blue at the bottom, this blue, and then it's gonna gradiate up to this light minty teal. So I'm gonna go in and outline where I want this blue to start. And in first, I'm gonna, as I said, have the darker blue on the bottom. We're gonna go to the lighter on the top. So I'm just gonna kind of draw some organic lines where we think we want the blue to stop, the gradient to start, and then the teal to start. So we have our threader, we have our yarn. Now we're gonna grab our gun. This is a cut pile gun. The blending technique works best with this type of gun. Um, I have a hack here that we'll actually discuss in my course. Um, and so now we're ready to thread our gun and get ready to start tufting. We're gonna go through our hack, then we're gonna go through the front tip. I'm putting my little threader through the hole. Now I'm pushing my yarn through my threader and pulling. I recommend with the cut pile gun to always do up and down straight lines. So what I'm gonna do is go through the whole word and tuft all these sections 
that I've chosen to be dark blue. I'm leaving some space in between the line to A, allow for the blending when I bring down lines from this section, but also you never want it to be too tight or it'll make your letters curl in the end. So here we go. Okay, now that we're done tufting the solid blue section, we're gonna move on to the blended part. This next section will be a little bit of teal and a little bit of blue. We're gonna thread it just as we were before. Then we're gonna thread our gun. And now we're ready to tuft again. Okay, we're done tufting the blended sections. Before we continue on, I'm gonna clean off these little tails everywhere so I can see what my last section really well. So now it's time to tuft the teal section. Just as we did with the dark blue, we're gonna do now two strands of teal. Okay, awesome. We're done tufting with the mint. So I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup, pull out all these tails, and then we're done tufting our word. Now that we're done tufting our word, there's a few things that I can do. I can either, you know, fill in the background or do some finishing work and just cut the letters out and make um, a piece of art just out of the letters. Um, we'll go over all of that in my course from the beginning of how to design, how I choose colors, to the tufting and how to best use your tools, all the way through the finishing. And so your artwork is ready to hang on the wall. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. And if you're interested in learning more about all about tufting, please check out and follow my course on Domestica.